Every 13 and 17 years, species of cicadas only found in North America emerge from the ground to transform into their adult forms. Billions swarm the eastern part of the country, singing their song for the sole purpose of attracting mates. And yes, I do mean billions with a B. Just listen to this. They're not just swarming right outside people's homes. These guys are such a nuisance that they even caused the flight delay by filling the engines of a plane. Delta Airlines says the bug swarmed the Airbus A330's auxiliary power unit, rendering it unworkable. And causing a car crash by flying into a driver's face. I was driving, and I'm guessing it was a potato flew in and smacked me right in the face. Yeah. And when that happened, I. Yeah. Well, aside from these incidents, cicadas themselves are actually rather harmless. They don't bite or sting, and are practically defenseless against any predators. For many predators, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for easy food. I mean, that one almost looked like it didn't even try to survive. And as weird as it sounds, offering themselves as a never-ending buffet is a survival trait called predator satiation. So maybe the predators can eat a few million of cicadas, but can they eat billions of cicadas? Eventually, predators become so full that the rest of the uneaten cicadas survive to reproduce. But if there's any species capable of eating another to extinction, humans come to mind. Cicada recipes are popping up all around, and some restaurants are serving up cicada sushi, cicada tacos, avo cicada toast. Apparently, some people call them the shrimp of the land. And enough people have tried it that the US FDA asked people not to eat cicadas if they are allergic to seafood. The proteins found in shellfish, like shrimps and lobsters, are very similar to the ones in cicadas. Putting cicadas and shrimps side by side, you can definitely see the resemblance. I'm just not sure whether that makes me feel worse about eating shellfish or better about eating insects. This resemblance to insects is probably what European colonists saw in lobsters for a brief time in North American history. For that few hundred years, lobsters were considered to be like cockroaches and generally eaten by peasants or fed to prisoners. But well, that's only in North America. Lobster had to be cooked within two days of leaving salt water, which made them quite expensive for certain countries. Being hard to obtain, lobster recipes made their way into the cookbooks of odd cuisine. Though, to say that insects and shellfish are related isn't exactly very accurate. Cicadas, shrimp and lobsters fall under the same phylum of arthropods. Thing is, this level of classification is pretty wide and basically includes all insects and spiders. Under the same classification, humans would fall under the phylum of chordates and would be related to tigers and elephants. And we do know that while all three are technically mammals, those are quite different. But forget the science, what do cicadas actually taste like? Well, there are comparisons to shrimp, though some people also say they don't taste like anything at all. I do have a question though, if we usually deshell shrimp to eat them, then why aren't people deshelling cicadas? Well, some say they are eaten best right after they molt and before the exoskeletons form so they aren't crunchy. Sort of like soft shell crab, but for cicadas. The wings can be cut off since they're useless nutrition wise, and doing so means you don't have to worry about nasty bits in your mouth. If all these talks about eating insects or entomophagy are making you squeamish, it just might be cultural. To about 2 billion people on the planet, it's actually not at all unusual to eat things like fried grasshoppers, buttered unlava, and roasted silkworm pupa. I'm guessing these images didn't actually help to make you feel better. So let's change it up a little bit. Chicken isn't usually served whole, with feathers and everything. Even raw chicken breast looks a little bit disgusting. But when you cook it, you transform its appearance, and it now looks delicious. So how about this one, guacamole with homemade tacos? And you wouldn't be able to tell, but this black seasoning is made from ants. Or polenta fries served with tomato chili chutney. Just a little secret ingredient with more bunny worms. Insect ice cream, made from black fly lava. After all, why shouldn't we eat insects? Compared to our usual proteins like chicken, pork and beef, Insects require less land use, produce less water footprint, require less feed, and much more of their bodies are edible. Which means that insect farms would contribute less to global warming. 
You can probably tell from the accent that I am not American and thus have nothing to do with the periodical cicadas and recipes popping up online. Regardless, insects as food is a fascinating question relevant to everybody on the planet. And there are many things left unanswered, like food safety and how should large-scale production be done should the need arises. But we'll see what happens the next time cicadas come out of the ground again.